What's up YouTube? In this video we're going to be discussing the subject of how do you float and set a wall. But before we get underway with that, just to really discuss what is float and set. Well it's where you apply a backing plaster using a product like a hardle, which you can see here, it's pretty ready ava readily available in most uh, builders merchants. So you apply an eight to 10 millimeter coat of hard wall and then you plaster over the top of it. What is the alternative to float and set? Well, it's to do something called dot and dab where you stick plasterboard over the wall and then you plaster over the top of it. So why would you choose to use float and set over a dot and dab? Well, for some, they think it is a better form of plastering. It's also a lot more solid. The wall is a lot harder. It's a lot stronger, which makes it really useful when it comes to uh, fixing things onto the wall. So typically on a new build, what you find is that the exterior walls are dotted out with plasterboard, but when there is a kitchen going in, uh, the walls are floating set, so there's a solid fixing for the kitchen, for the base and the wall units to be attached to. Now, the, one, the wall that we are on here, the homeowner didn't want it dabbed, so we're gonna float and set it. <clears throat> so um, what we've done off camera is we have applied uh, PVA glue over the brickwork just to really uh, seal in any, possibly any loose dust or anything like that, just to help kill a little bit of the suction. It isn't particularly necessary as hard wall is used for high suction backgrounds, but at the same time, it's also gonna give you a little bit of extra time, so it's not a bad practice to get into. So what we're gonna do on this wall here, just to start with, is we're actually gonna put a tight coat of um, hard wall over all the walls uh, just to really kill that initial suction and just to give it a base for us to start working with to get the wall flat. So let's do that now. So to start applying the hard wall what we're going to do is just really put a nice tight coat over the whole wall. Really pushing that hard wall into the brickwork. At this point, at this point, we're not looking at trying to get the wall particularly flat. We're not looking to get the hard wall nice and flat. We're just looking to cover the brickwork with a nice tight coat. So really push that in. Testing out a new trail at the moment, which is a new uh, Marshalltown carbon steer. One thing I just forgot to mention before you start applying the hard wall, it's a good idea just to use a straight edge. It can either be a bit of um, timber, could be a bit of box section or a feather edge here, and just to check the wall, just to see how flat it is. So. I've already done this off camera, but just check all along the wall just to see if there's any particularly low spots or any particular high spots, just so you've got a little bit more information about the wall that you are applying the hard wall to, just so you know which areas might be trouble areas that you'll need to apply extra work uh, to just to get the wall flat. But now uh, we have applied the top section, what we can now do is go through and run the lower sections. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea uh, to work right to left, being right-handed. Uh, I'm not going to, because I can't be bothered. But generally the principle is very similar to rendering. When you're applying a backing plaster, if you're right-handed, you want to go right to left. Um, because when you apply the plaster, you'll go left to right. It's supposed to make it a little bit better flattening it. I don't think there's an awful lot in it. Um, I'm not going to bother today, uh, but it isn't a bad practice to get into. If you have it a little bit stiffer, certainly for small walls like this, it's a couple of things. It makes it a little bit easier to get the thickness. So although we're applying two coats, we're looking to try and achieve between eight and 10 millimeters on the hard wall itself. So a little bit stiffer, makes it a bit easier. That said, just remember the stiffer it is, the less time you have to work with it. This is a small wall, so um, I'm not concerned. 
Okay, so the wall behind me is now all put on. All I've done is just put a, a fairly tight coat over um, these, this block work, probably around four or five mil, something like that, just to kill that initial suction. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it a very quick flatten. Now, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna use uh, one of our Rafina spatulas now. So what I'm gonna do is just run it from the bottom, very, very sharp angle, pretty much 90 degrees, and just scrape out uh, the high spots. Now, don't worry if you don't have the speed, the skim, or a spat straight touch, so forth. And to be perfectly honest with you, if this was a metal bladed speed skim, I probably wouldn't be using it. I'd actually use uh, the straight edge over there. Um, but if you don't have one of these, don't worry, just use your straight edge. At this point, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. And say, so just do. At the bottom. So this is just really, just looking just to take out any massive high spots you may have. And then what we're gonna do is go the other way as well. So this way. You really see the job that that uh, first coat's done, taking a lot of the moisture out. So very aggressive angle. Almost, the spatula is almost at 90 degrees uh, to the wall. So if we were to have a look now, just running that spatula, can see straight away just how flat it gets it. And so this is a 1500 speed skim. So you can see this is just the first coat, we're obviously gonna apply a second coat as well just to take out any further undulations. But just running that spatula very quickly over the wall, what was it, two minutes, just to scrape back any of those high spots. It's made that second coat an awful lot easier for me to get on. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, just mix up a little bit more. This time it's gonna be slightly wetter. I prefer uh, that first coat just to be a little bit stiffer, just makes life uh, a little bit easier, just trying to straighten most of the wall out. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of extra water uh, and mix up a bit more, and then we'll cover that second coat. There's a little bit of GML basically mesh, metal mesh, sticking through, which isn't helpful. I'm looking just to really try and build this out to that eight to 10 millimeter thickness. Okay, so the wall behind me now has had its second coat over. Uh, Spirit of Transparency, I was a little short, so I did run the spat just to create some gear, which is why it possibly looks a little bit neater than if I just applied it with a trowel. But this is where we're at so far. Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to rule this fat flat and fill in the lows. Now, one thing I like to do, which is a tad controversial, I'm sure I'll probably get told off in the comments, is I actually like to run the spatula first. Why? A couple of reasons. Um, at this point, the hard wall is still very wet, so um, as long as you've got quite an aggressive angle on the spatula, there's no reason why it won't work as a rule. The other thing as well is, is generally, it's just, it works a little bit easier in taking out the high spots, filling in the lows, just on, the initial, it's certainly not something I would rely on 
um, as a derby or as a straight edge <coughs> entirely. What I quite like to do is run the spatula first and then use my feather edge just to see how it's coming out. So we're gonna do that now. So I'm gonna use my spatula. Now I actually have the 1500 Athena spatula, which is actually longer than the uh, feather edge that I'm actually gonna be using. <coughs> but what you wanna do is just run it from the bottom very aggressive angle, so maybe 75 plus degrees, and you're running it nice and light all the way up the wall, like so. You'll get a little bit of uh, takeoff, that's fine. We'll just put that back in the bucket. And then same again. <clears throat> okay, so it's quite easy with a 1500 spat. This is only a three meter wall, so <clears throat> pretty much does a, a clean pass, uh, two clean passes covers the entire wall. But now what we're going to have a look at, and this is quite important, this is quite important that you then, before you do your vertical pass, that you check your horizontal first. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the feather edge now. We're not going to rely on the spatula for a straight edge. We'll actually use an aluminium straight bar. Let's have a look at how flat it's coming out. You can see possibly going to be a bit low in the middle. No. Okay. A bit high up. middle and the end and then lastly the very top cross so if we just check the skirting line The downside of being six foot two, bending down is not so desirable. There we go. So hopefully you can see. Um, so we've just used the spatula just to do two very very quick passes, just to uh, really take out the high spots, and then checked it with the straight edge which is if I'd use the straight edge I would be doing that anyway I'd be referencing it off that and you can clearly see that is nearer is perfectly flat so that's why it's quite nice just to use something like and again I, I just prefer that Rafina spatula just because the blade is a bit thicker you can use it as a straight edge just don't rely on it just obviously do your checks with the feather edge but it just makes life a little bit easier so now what we're going to do is obviously going to do the vertical now, I am expecting the top to be kicking out a little bit. I'm not too worried about it. The reason being is the EML uh, at the top, which obviously is metal mesh, is just throwing it out a little bit. So I'll probably end up having to, to um, get over that with, with multi, to be perfectly honest with you. I don't want to bring it out too far um, because the homeowner did the hack off and there are just a few high spots on the hack off. So. Um, um, I am expecting it to be slightly leaning out at the top, but I don't think it's going to be anything too much to worry about. But uh, we start at the top. You can't see it in the camera, but I can see there is a dip there in the top. Again, I'm not massively concerned, to be perfectly honest with you. Because obviously, I'd rather cover the EML.
we're just going to check with the straight edge. I have seen just using that feather edge that there are a few low spots here. So you can see there, if I put that right to the ceiling, you can see there's a low spot there. Put it down a little bit off the ceiling so we can see there's low there. Feather down. Not too bad. Not too bad. A little bit low there on the right against the skirting line. Same again. A little bit of a dive away on the skirting line and a little bit higher. And then we've obviously got a little bit of a high spot here. So we can see here, there's a quite a large high spot here that we're going to have to take out. So what we now want to do <coughs> is this side here, there's, there's quite a big high spot. The wall's coming down at an angle and then goes back in. So I'm actually going to use the straight edge again uh, for no other reason than it's longer. I'm just going to take out that high spot. Like so. We take a few passes just to take it out. All right. And we'll have another look at it. A little bit more of a dive there. Little bit of a lump, but I think I can lose that on the multi. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to fill out this section here. So, it's pretty much from here to about here. And then, what we're going to do is we're just going to reapply the hard wall with what we have, just to try and straighten that out a little bit. So we've applied the hard wall, and we're just gonna use the straight edge again on the vertical, and then just have a little look. see just applying that bit of hard wall just applying that little bit of extra hard wall has just straightened that out so the last thing I'd just like to do is just very very lightly run over the top <clears throat> just push it back in And now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just leave that for some time now just to pick up. I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna clean my corners, clean the skirting line, leave that to pick up so it's firm to the touch, and then we're gonna scratch this up with a devil flow. So we will catch up when we're at that point. So you can see, these are all drilled through. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna back it off just a fraction. So just, so I've just backed them off just a little bit, so just the points are slightly showing through. Now the point of this is to take off some high, the high spots on the hardwall. To be perfectly honest with you, you could just use a scarify and scratch it up. If you floated it to, or if you ruled it off uh, straight, this isn't massively necessary. Um, you could see in the video, it's pretty darn straight but it is a necessary process to apply uh, a scratch to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this Devil Float. But don't worry if you haven't got one, a Scarifier will suffice if you've ruled this off properly. So what we're then gonna do, so what we're then gonna do is just use the float and then just push it in the corner, like so, down, 
and down. And you can see here, and then gently, figure of eight motion, pushing in to the wall like so. Again, same here. It's just picking it up. What we want to do is just give it a little shake off. And then same again. And you're looking for e, an even key all the way across. Going in the top. Like so. Okay, so that is it. You can see here I have just run the uh, Devil Flow over all of the wall. Now what I'm going to do is just going to leave that for probably another half an hour to an hour just so that it's pulled uh, right in uh, and then we what we're going to do is just uh, scrape back the loose bits of uh, hardwood that have come up on the Devil Flow and then we will apply our plaster. So we will catch up at that point. So what we're now going to do is I'm just going to clean up the mess from the scratch, which is obviously a long mess. So I'll just clean that up and then we will start mixing up. Now, when it comes to mixing up, it's a very important thing to remember that when you are plastering over hard wall, it typically uh, goes off very, very fast. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to mix up enough for the first and the second coat. We're going to mix it up a little bit wetter. Now the plan is, what we're going to do is we're going to apply the first coat very, very thin, really work it in uh, to those scratch lines, really work it in nice, neat and flat. And then very, very quickly after it will pull in very fast, we are then going to apply the second coat using the same mix. So what we're going to do is we will mix up and then we'll catch up when we're applying the plaster. This isn't particularly necessary, but as I have a spatula, why not? You can just do this with the trowel. This is a lot easier. Using one of these, much faster. Floor both ways. Spatula also helps just to take some of the air out of it. You want to spat both ways to get the air out. That's 
so. Okay, so if we were to have a look at that now, that's had its first coat over fairly tight, run it, uh, the spud over it just, uh, just to make my life a little bit easier, but don't worry if you don't have one, just use a trowel. I'm just gonna leave this for literally five minutes, let this pick up a bit, and then I'm gonna use the same plaster and apply the second coat, so we'll catch up then. Really good coat, maybe. Maybe a couple of mil thick. Just to really straighten this out. Really cover up any scratch marks made by the double flight. Amazing just how good these uh, Marshall Town carbons are out of the box. I'm really impressed. I will say that I think that the cement version, which is slightly narrower, slightly stiffer, uh, yesterday I actually thought I should have managed to finish an entire entire wall with that straight out of the box and it looks really nice. Now those scratch marks are filled in, I can go from the floor all the way up to where I plastered already. It's a lot faster applying the second coat than trying to and trying to fill out those scratch marks on the first coat. <clears throat> Maybe you're looking to go on nice and thick. Okay, so that has now had its first and its second coat and it's been flattened. And this set so far is probably on about 20 to 30 minutes. If I was to show you the condition of the wall. So obviously we've got a few spat lines. It's quite a new spat, the, uh, that one there, the Rafina, which is why it's leaving a few tram lines. Um, but they will go uh, as soon as it starts to firm up. Now what we're gonna do, is we are just going to leave that just to pick up for a while. Now, you will notice in a few places here that there are air bubbles in the uh, hard wall. So generally, a couple of ways to get rid of them. You can get rid of them. The more you uh, go through the trowel stages, what happens is it pushes the air out. There is another way, which is an easier way, um, which is a little bit controversial, but I'm okay with that. And that is to sponge float the plaster that will pull the air out pretty much immediately. So that's actually what we're gonna do here because certainly for those that don't do uh, float and set, this is actually the easiest way to get rid of those bubbles. So we're gonna let these, this pick up and then we will catch up when we are using the sponge float to take out those air bubbles. Okay, so we've left this wall for five, 10 minutes. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to use a sponge float uh, I've just wetted that down, just need a little bit of water and we are going to sponge the wall. Plaster's still fairly wet. I'm just going to run the sponge over the top of the plaster. Doesn't have to be anything amazing. This 
is a lot easier with a sprayer, but I don't have one with me, so. But a general weed sprayer, weed killer sprayer, is ideal for this sort of thing. The point of this is it just helps take those bubbles out. Now if you were to have a look, it's all been sponged up, so what we're now going to do is just get the spat and we're just going to go over it again. So thought, straight over, nice shallow angle. take any of the plaster off if possible. You can see that now most of the bubbles have come out. A little bit of plaster on the spat, not an awful lot. And then what we're going to do is just go straight over it with our trowel. And the so the trail into the corners of the wall, really tighten those up. Applying quite a lot of pressure, the trail is very flat, there's a lot of pressure. You're looking to force the bubbles out of the wall. Occasionally you might get a, a uh, lone bubble. <clears throat> if you do, just use the corner of your trowel and just, just stab the bubble, just to get rid of it. <clears throat> Timing-wise, we're up to about <coughs> we're up to about an hour, maybe a little bit less. And you're just looking to just clean up that skirting line. Just run the trail on the bottom. Hopefully you can see pretty much pretty much all the bubbles now are completely gone. So it's just a, it's quite an easy way using the sponge just to take out those bubbles. As I already mentioned, you can do it using the trowel. You just go over the trowel, um, go over the wall multiple times. Usually they start coming out on the wet trowel, the first and wet, second wet trowel, but it doesn't tend to dry as nice. So using a sponge. Um, just makes life a little easier. You're obviously looking to sponge it when the plaster is still a little bit wet um, because obviously you're really trying to perforate onto that through to that first coat. So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna clean up all my edges and then I'm going to do our wet trowel so we will catch up at that point. Okay, so this has been allowed to pull in for about 15, 20 minutes. There's still a bit of moisture in the wall but it's about the right time for the wet trowel so I'm going to still use the new Marshalltown carbon. Uh, we're using, still using the uh, cement uh, version, which is slightly stiffer, slightly narrower. I am expecting uh, 
a reasonable amount of plaster to come off on this chair, just because it's not very sharp, it tends to drag the plaster off a little bit. But just relatively flat angle. This is coming out very nice. So I would expect to see a reasonable amount of uh, plaster coming off because it's such a new trowel. It almost tends to uh, scrape the plaster off a little bit. Really, yeah, I'm impressed with how how nice this trowel is out of the box. It really is very good. Okay, so this has had its first wet trail. What I'm actually gonna do, because I have just used the uh, I've just just used the uh, trowel, the new one. So this is the cement trowel, the uh, slightly narrower uh, 14 inch and it's uh, very stiff, but just so you can see how good or rubbish Alex Morley may be at plastering, what I'm actually going to do is shine this thing up against it. Let's have a look at how she's coming out. Bear in mind, this is a brand spanking new trowel. And that's its first wet trowel. Why? How nice that has come out. On this trowel, bear in mind as I said, this is a this is a brand new trowel. Not sharpened it, not done anything to it. So I'm really happy with how it's come out so far. So all I'm gonna do now is just go through to the second wet trowel and then I'll run a plastic over it. Um, I imagine the second wet trowel will be ready in about 20 minutes and then I'll do a plastic straight over. And then that really is it. So that, in short, is how you float and set a wall. Now, obviously this is a very small wall. Um, obviously if you're doing much larger areas, you'd be mixing up an awful lot more. You'd want the hard wall uh, a lot wetter so it can go further. And in reality as well, you wanna try and hit as much as you possibly can in the morning, but not so much that you can't plaster it all in the afternoon. So you can see it's a really quick set. I think we've been going at just over an hour or so. It's about an hour and 20 minutes on this uh, plastering this up and it will probably be finished in about 20 minutes or so. So it's very, very quick when you're doing float and set. So what are the pros and the cons? Why would you consider using float and set? Why would you consider not? Well, the biggest pro obviously is it's solid backed plaster so you're getting really good fixings obviously it'll take a, a lot of abuse if something hits it it's not likely to get damaged in the way that dot and dab might uh, if it hits it in the right spot misses those dabs it, you run the risk of it punching through you're not going to get that with solid back plaster but what is the downside? Well, there are a few. For a start, it's a lot harder. It's a lot harder to get it flat. It's a lot harder to get it plumb, whereas it's very easy with, with uh, dot and dab. The other thing as well is it's, it's actually harder to plaster up. When you're plastering a plasterboard, it's a known quantity. It's very, very easy. You're not, you know, you know, you're not chasing your tail, trying to get massive sets on, and it's pulling in really, really quick. 
Um, so that's a bit of a drawback. But for us, one of the biggest reasons why we don't do it an awful lot is because it is really labor intensive and it's very expensive. Just this wall alone, use two and a half bags of hard wall. They're 10 pound each. Um, and then it's half a day to put it on, let it pull in and then plaster it. So in reality, this would be an entire day's work if this is all we were doing in the house. We are plastering some ceilings elsewhere in the house, so it, it's not a complete waste of money. But it is fairly expensive to have done, whereas if I dabbed this, I, I could do that in two and a half, three hours, it would be finished. I'd be on my way to another job. So it is expensive. When we mention about labor intensive, it's very hard on your body. Obviously, hard walls are heavier product. You're having to really work quite hard. You feel it in your shoulder and your elbow. So it is quite tiring, but it has its place. Certainly it's not our go-to method. We did actually uh, ask the homeowner if we wanted it dabbed. He said no, uh, but for the most part, it's not something where we do full houses in float and set because in our opinion, uh, the newer method of dot and dabbing is actually a better method. It feels slightly warmer to the touch, it's quicker, it's slightly cheaper, and in our opinion, you get a slightly better job. That said, this has come out really nice. We hope uh, it's been explained to you in a way that possibly gives you confidence uh, to possibly try it yourself. Maybe you found some tips uh, that you find useful in your own work. We thank you so much for watching the video. If it's been helpful, consider giving a thumbs up and subscribing, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks again.